sometimes in astrophotography processing, we run into scenarios where we need to enhance specific areas of our image while leaving other areas alone. And that's where masking comes in. Lucky for us, PixInsight has an easy way to do this. Hey everyone, it's Tony with Hidden Light Photography. And today we're gonna to be talking about masks, which can then be used to further enhance your images. More specifically, we're gonna be talking about range selection and how to use that to create an easy mask. So if you haven't done so yet, hit that subscribe button. I don't want you to miss out on any valuable information. We still got a lot to cover in this channel. Now let's head on over and learn how to use range selection to create an easy mask. To find range selection, what you're going to do is go into process, all processes, and then go down to range selection. And you'll see here that there are a few different items that we can play with. And this right here is range selections default settings. And again, in PixInsight, if you are not sure that you have your default settings or you need to reset, just click this little bottom right um, box and that'll put you back to default. Now, one thing I wanna point out is lightness. This, I never found a reason to uncheck that. I always have it checked. And what it is, it's just working on your light channel versus your RGB. And uh, as you'll see when we get into the workflow videos, when we use range selection, we're going to be working with a mono channel and it's going to be a fake luminance that we create from the data that we're working with, with our one shot color cameras. If you're using mono, you'll have your luminance channel and that's generally what you'll be working with. Now to start with upper and, and lower limits, this is the lowest value that you're willing to accept and upper is the highest value that you're willing to accept. Now, if you haven't seen my GHS video or generalized hyperbolic stretch, each pixel is going to be assigned a brightness value. And if you click and hold, you'll see on the bottom right of my cursor, X, Y, and K. And what we're looking at is K, and you'll see a value, 0 0.0413. And as I move this around, that value changes. And when we're in the background or darkest parts of the image, that value is low. On the flip side, if we go to the brightest parts, that value gets higher. Now, uh, I'll have a, a link to my GHS video in the description of this video so you can learn more about that. Um, and I'll also have links to every other video in the PixInsight series. Now, knowing about these values, if you were to take this lower limit slider and move it right, you'll see a value appear in this box. Anything less than that value or um, darker than that value will be eliminated from the mask. And on the flip side, upper limit, if I take this slider and drag it left, anything um, brighter than that value will be eliminated from the mask. Now let's go ahead and see this in action. So let's open a preview, which is this little circle, and you'll immediately see a big, bright, white screen. And that's because everything is selected. The lower limit is zero, the upper limit is one, and everything in between that is selected, which is everything. So if we take this lower limit slider and move it to the right, you'll see right over here, 0 0.09, Anything less than 0 0.09 or darker than 0 0.09 is removed from the mask, and that's shown here as black. So we can move this to where you know where you want it to be, and then we can even adjust further upper limit. And then what you'll see, what I want you to do is watch the core area of Orion right in here, and you'll see that everything bright starts getting eliminated from that mask as we um, lower the upper limit value. Now, with range selection, it's black or white. It is or it isn't. So you'll see very harsh transitions between black and white. Now, how do we fix that? What we do is use fuzziness. 
So as we drag the fuzziness slider, you'll see that the transitions between black and white start getting smoother. Okay. And smoothness factor, what that's going to do is blur it out to further assist in the transition uh, between black or white, is or isn't. And then you just get this to where you want it to be. And where do you want it to be? Well, it just depends on what you're looking for and what you're trying to do. Um, and so playing with this, you know, you're, you're growing your taste, you're making your vision reality. So it's going to take a few tries with uh, playing with this to figure out what fits what you're looking for and how you get it to do what you want it to do. But knowing what these sliders do will help you to achieve that final goal. Knowing what they do helps you to adjust um, what you need to adjust in order to achieve your final goal. Now, one last thing over here, link range limits. So you saw that we can adjust these individually. If you click link, it adjusts them together. Now, I've never found a reason to need to use this. In fact, I don't really ever adjust lower limit or upper limit. What I do and what I'm going to show you in my workflow in a, in a future video is um, using screen. So let's throw this back to defaults. And if you click screening, you'll see that it basically looks like your luminance channel or your um, false luminance, which I'll show you how to create. And this is what I normally use. I will normally click screening and then fuzziness, you know, I'll start with, you know, let's just say 0.3. And then on smoothness, I might use five or even 10. And, and this is actually a perfect example to lead into my next point is it really depends on your data. Now, a lot of my data, when I go into smoothing of five, I'll generally get something that looks more like this. And I hope your screen can, you know, show you or, you know, my video can show you the um, difference between, you know, this and this. So five will normally put my image looking like this, right? Where it's, it's very um, blurry. Just like, you know, when I'm, uh, let's put this back to five really quick you'll see in the core that it's, you know, starting to uh, get rid of some of that. And if I'm using this for, uh, let's say, um, local histogram transformation, I don't want that core to be eliminated. So I might run this back to, you know, 0.26 over here gets the core completely in. Whereas if I'm adjusting um, luminance in curves transformation, which will brighten the image or dim it out, then I might raise this up just a little bit to eliminate the core from the mask. So I'm not raising the brightness of the core. Um, so again, it really just depends on what you're looking for, what you're trying to do, and playing with these values will help you get there. Now. Invert is going to invert your mask or um, give the opposite effect of what it protects. So, for example, if you are protecting the background, and it, such as in this case, and you invert it, it's actually going to protect the nebula or galaxy if you're working on a galaxy and allow you to make adjustments to the background. Now, I don't ever click invert because there's uh, hotkeys to be able to do that. So how do we apply this? Well, what we're going to do, let's say that we like how this looks right here. You're going to just uh, hit the little square. And then we'll get rid of the preview here. And then what we're going to do is we're going to 
take our tab, click, and drag it over and let it go. We'll minimize this, get this out of our way. And you're probably thinking, I can't work with that. That is a lot of red. Well, that's okay. If you hit um, Control K, now you don't see that red anymore. And you know that the mask is applied because you see how this is um, tan or brown. Now, if you hit Control Shift M, Notice how that's grayed out now. The mask is no longer applied. Control Shift M. See how now it changed back. Uh, it has the brown on there, so now the mask is applied. And again, Control K will show you the mask, or Control K will hide the mask. Now, if we hit Control Shift I, there's your inversion of the mask. So you can use the same mask to work on different parts of your image in just the hotkeys, control shift I inverts, control shift M gets rid of, and we still see the mask, but you notice how this is grayed out. The mask is no longer applied. And then control K hides the mask. So if you're working, just a quick tip, if you're working with a mask and you have it hidden where you can't see, always check right here to make sure that your mask is applied if it should be applied. And if you see that it's grayed out and you need your mask and you know that you have your mask, you know, uh, created and assigned to the image, control shift M applies the mask. So brown equals applied, gray equals uh, unapplied. And that is how you use range selection to create a quick and easy mask. And I hope that you found that useful. Uh, do me a favor, that channel icon that just popped up, hit that channel icon and subscribe. I don't want you to miss out on any information. We still have a long way to go. And we're continuing on in this Picks and Sight series, almost to that final moment of download and uh, doing workflows. And then uh, throw a comment in the comment section. Did you learn anything new? Do you have any questions? And then check out that next video. Until the next time, clear skies.